Stand Shipyard Limited, HSL, recently completed the fastest ever normal refit of an ECAM class submarine, enhancing the Indian Navy's combat readiness. Completed four days ago, the milestone was praised for its quality and speed. HSL Chairman and Managing Director Kundi Hamant Katri credited the achievement to decades of submarine expertise, teamwork, and support from Naval Dockyard Visakhapatnam and Eastern Naval Command. Notably, escape hatch modifications for DSRV integration were accomplished for the first time on an Indian refitted conventional sub. HSL is now preparing to refit a Scorpion class submarine showcasing its ability to handle modern, high-end platforms. This track record makes HSL a frontrunner for upcoming strategic programs such as the Medium Refit Come Life Certification, MRLC, of the Sindhug Hosh class and submarine construction under projects P-75I and P-76. HSL is also in talks with Vietnam for global refit partnerships, solidifying India's role as a self-reliant defense manufacturing hub in the Indo-Pacific region. Naval Group of France and India's Mazagon Dock Shipbuilders Limited have agreed to extend their strategic collaboration to support the integration of DRDO's indigenously developed air independent propulsion system into the Indian Navy's Calvary class submarines. The agreement marks a key milestone in India's efforts to enhance underwater endurance and operational stealth of its conventional submarines. The AIP system, developed by DRDO's Naval Materials Research Laboratory, an MRL, is designed to enable submarines to remain submerged for longer durations without surfacing. This collaboration ensures technical support from the original equipment manufacturer, while incorporating advanced Indian technologies. The upgrade is planned during the midlife refit of the submarines, starting with INS Calvary, and is seen as a step toward strengthening indigenous capabilities under the Make in India initiative and enhancing long-term fleet sustainability. India's upcoming Zorawar light tank is set to be equipped with Israel's combat-proven Trophy Active Protection System, APS, to bolster its defense against modern battlefield threats, such as anti-tank guided missiles or ATGMs, rocket-propelled grenades, and loitering drones. This decision comes as India accelerates the development of the Zorwar tank for high-altitude deployment along the northern borders, where it will counter potential threats from both China and Pakistan. The Trophy Active Protection System, already deployed on Israeli and U.S. tanks, detects and neutralizes incoming projectiles in real time, offering a significant survivability upgrade. Integration discussions reportedly began in early 2024, with trials expected to follow. The inclusion of this system aligns with India's aim to equip Zorawar with cutting-edge technology while leveraging global defense partnerships for timely induction and enhanced operational readiness in challenging terrains. India and China recently held diplomatic discussions in New Delhi under the Working Mechanism for Consultation and Coordination, or WMCC framework, with both sides describing the talks as candid and constructive. These discussions focused on implementing outcomes from the 23rd Special Representatives Meeting on the boundary issue and preparing for the upcoming 24th Special Representatives Meeting, expected later this year in India. India's Ministry of External Affairs noted that, the prevailing peace and tranquility along the border has aided the gradual normalization of bilateral ties. The talks reflected both nations' continued commitment to managing border disputes through dialogue and cooperation. This engagement forms part of a broader effort to ease tensions and maintain stability following recent years of heightened friction along the line of actual control. Amid rising tensions and violent clashes along the Thailand-Cambodia border, the Indian Embassy in Thailand advised Indian tourists on Friday to exercise caution and follow updates from official Thai sources. The advisory came as Thailand's tourism authority declared several provinces 
including Yubin Ratchathani, Surin, and Trat, unsafe for travel. The conflict intensified after a landmine explosion on Wednesday injured five Thai soldiers, sparking diplomatic fallout and reciprocal expulsion of ambassadors. On Thursday, Thai officials confirmed 14 fatalities, 13 civilians and one soldier, and 46 injuries, accusing Cambodian forces of attacking civilians and a hospital. While Cambodia had not disclosed its casualties, Thailand urged immediate cessation of hostilities and respect for peaceful coexistence. The situation has prompted concerns over regional stability and the safety of travelers, especially near affected border areas. India and the UK officially signed a long-negotiated free trade agreement in London. The deal was formalized in the presence of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his British counterpart Keir Starmer. Finalized earlier on May 6, the deal aims to double bilateral trade to $120 billion by 2030. India agreed to lower import duties on UK goods like Scotch whiskey and cars, while gaining tariff-free access for textiles, jewelry and pharmaceuticals. The UK secured easier entry into India's telecom, banking and tender markets, though India received limited visa concessions. Critics raised concerns over potential threats to Indian auto, MSMEs, and affordable medicines. Despite strategic and economic optimism, analysts warned of risks from IP rules, lack of carbon tax safeguards, and projected tariff revenue losses. The FTA symbolizes stronger ties, but its long-term impact remains debated. Godridge Enterprises Group's Aerospace Division has signed a contract with global aircraft engine giant, Pratt & Whitney, to manufacture aerospace parts, marking a major leap in India's aviation manufacturing sector. The deal is set to enhance Godridge's technological capabilities and production capacity, reinforcing its goal to become a key global supplier to aircraft engine OEMs. Company officials highlighted that their advanced infrastructure and expertise will help expand India's presence in the precision aerospace supply chain. With 35,000 square meters of existing aerospace manufacturing capacity and another 48,500 square meters under development, Godridge aims to position itself as a global player. The collaboration also supports India's broader vision under Atmanirbhar Bharat to elevate domestic manufacturing and strengthen international partnerships in high-tech defense and aviation sectors. India's push to indigenously produce its fifth-generation stealth fighter, the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, has entered a critical phase with Tata Advanced Systems Limited, TSL, and Larson and Tubro, LNT, emerging as leading contenders to partner with Howe for series production. The development, reported in July 2025, comes as the Defense Ministry evaluates industrial partners to co-produce the AMCA under a proposed special-purpose vehicle model. Both Tata and LNT bring significant manufacturing experience, TSL from its involvement in the C-295 transport aircraft, and ongoing support for the Tejas program, and LNT from its defense-grade composite structures, and modular manufacturing expertise. Their proven capabilities and existing infrastructure are being seen as critical assets to meet the AMCA's complex stealth, avionics, and structural requirements. The AMCA designed by DRDO's Aeronautical Development Agency, is India's most ambitious fighter project, aimed at countering regional fifth-gen threats and ensuring long-term air dominance. The SBV model is expected to allow HAL to focus on R&D and flight testing, while the private partner takes the lead in large-scale manufacturing. A final decision is expected soon, as India aims to begin prototype rollout by the late 2020s and operational induction in the early 2030s. In light of growing regional security challenges, the Indian Air Force has reportedly emphasized the urgent need to procure at least 60 foreign fifth-generation fighter jets as an interim measure to bridge the capability gap 
until the indigenous AMCA is ready for induction. As of July 2025, this request comes amid rising concerns over China's rapid deployment of stealth fighters, like the J-20, and Pakistan's potential acquisition of similar platforms through Chinese or Turkish collaboration. IF officials have warned that the current fleet, limited to fourth-generation aircraft like Su-30 MKIs and Rafalis, lacks the stealth and electronic warfare capabilities required to counter adversaries equipped with fifth-gen systems. Although the AMCA program is progressing, it is not expected to be operational before the early 2030s, making the next five to seven years a critical period. Options under consideration include the Su-57E from Russia, F-35 from the U.S., and other potential platforms, with the final decision likely influenced by strategic partnerships and technology transfer offers. The move highlights the IF's evolving doctrine focused on air dominance and survivability in contested airspaces, while ensuring preparedness against simultaneous threats on both Western and Eastern fronts. In a significant boost to India's indigenous defense capabilities, the Gas Turbine Research Establishment GTRE, has reportedly secured fresh funding to accelerate the final certification of the Kaveri derivative engine intended for the upcoming Guttuck Stealth UCAV. Announced in July 2025, this development marks a renewed push to revive and adapt the legacy Kaveri engine program, now tailored for unmanned aerial applications. The new funding will enable GTRE to complete critical high-altitude and endurance trials, focusing on stealth-optimized performance, reduced thermal signature, and compatibility with the Guttuck's internal weapons bay. Officials noted that the modified engine version is lighter, more compact, and better suited for unmanned operations compared to the original fighter-grade variant. The Guttuck UCAV, being developed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, is a key part of India's future air combat ecosystem, intended to deliver deep strike capabilities with low radar visibility and precision targeting. The Kaveri derivative's success would not only power this next-gen platform, but also reduce reliance on foreign propulsion systems. This progress aligns with India's Atmanirbhar Bharat vision and highlights the strategic importance of indigenous engine development in building a self-reliant aerospace ecosystem. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.